here today with Andy Schick, who is the Global Director of Automation and Analytics at Xero. Welcome. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. So, Andy, you've gone from an organization that's sales-led, primarily using exact target for your email marketing, and you're now deploying some real heavy-hitting marketing automation technology. What was your starting point? Yeah, well, I think the, the starting point um, really was led from the top of the organization, um, realizing that um, Xero is an incredibly quickly scaling business um, and, um, <clears throat> and had done the last 10 years of, of scale being dri you know, driving with sales teams and sales forces out there and to, to, um, to hit the accelerator again meant needing a lot of marketing automation. Uh, and doing you know, a lot of the heavy hift lifting before the sales call took place or instead of a sales call, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. And so what, what have you been able to do now that you couldn't do before? Well, I think um, a lot of identification of uh, hyper-targeting of the, of the right person and being able to really narrow in on the right customer at the right time and also increasingly um, a diverse set of channels as well. So we're really enjoying with Marketo the ability to um, engage with a person at different times of the day um, through different channels as well. So, you know, all the integrations and including um, the double click network through through Google and also Facebook is, is enormous for us. Yeah, for sure. And so where are you at now with personalization? Oh, every almost everything is is right. personalised. We don't. <clears throat> I mean, we we still have a, a blog program uh, which goes on to the website, but increasingly we're working on um, even even the areas which is usually write and blast. Um, we're becoming far more regionalised there. So we've um, just started regionalising um, all of our blog digest type things for. Uh, different types of customers who are in different regions and just this year bringing on the Asian market, really working with, um, with that team to figure out exactly what their customers are needing and what channels they need to operate with. So, so in terms of your blog, are you saying that you're now sort of dynamically serving a different blog to a different region or a different, a, a different content topic to, to a person with different, different tastes? Yeah, and that's, yep. um, that's both through, through, um, through the website channel and also through our email content. Yeah. As well. Yeah, great. So what have been some of the biggest challenges in terms of getting this whole automation thing in progress? I think um, the balance between integrating the way that you want to have it integrated, you know, your, your, your beautiful ut utopia of all of your data platforms working really well and the need to just speed, um, to, to execute with speed. So um, marketing people who drive marketing automation programs are usually not the people who have big waterfall projects that take a year. We're, you know, by our very nature, we want something yesterday, mm. and if we can't have it yesterday, we bloody well want it tomorrow. Yeah. And um, and that has that balance has been um, a point of I think tension yeah. um, that we've I think we're largely getting it right. We have we've sacrificed I think. Um, future integrations um, for speed right now and then we are as a, as a company we are exceptionally good at rebuilding the planes engine while we're flying it yeah. uh, and that has become the norm it's become expected practice and everyone is okay with that yeah great um, so what would be some advice that you would give to a CMO who's starting out on their real heavy hitting automation journey um, as much as possible get your data architecture in place mm -hmm. um, before you implement if you're able to, and if you're not able to, go for it anyway, and then figure out how to replumb the databases, yeah. um, how to go from um, scheduled script pools into live connections, mm -hmm. and uh, and get okay with that because you're constantly replumbing the engines anyway. You may as well start right at the beginning and just go for it. Yeah. So is that a real part of that process moving forwards? That it's really adapting on the fly. Yeah, and I imagine it will. Uh, we're probably, um, you know, we're a year into this journey, and we're doing a lot of replumbing um, still at the moment. But it's been well worth it when we've done thought experience experiments of where we would have been if we had done all of this 
perfectly from begin from yep. the beginning. We are further ahead now than if we had done things properly. Really? And we've got all of the benefits of doing the automation, all of the learnings, Yeah. Uh, probably a few more grey hairs. Yeah, right. But it's been an absolutely wild ride and we've yeah. got we've got real numbers to to prove prove that as well. I expect that you would have been you've been able to scale much more quickly through the implementing this quickly as well, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. I mean the number of um, the number of leads and opportunities and contacts that we're touching um, has certainly skyrocketed, but also broadened as well because we're able to identify um, the types of customers who haven't ordinarily been getting our comms, really building specific comms just for them. So mm. our, um, the, um, the percentage of reach across our, across our customer base has been broadened because we've been able to identify a whole lot more. I mean, we've got a very complex business. It's um, and we've got 750,000 small business customers as well. So it's, um, and it's a complex sell, it's accountancy packaging, it, um, a, a, an accountant experience online. So it's not like, um, it's just, it's just a, a quick widget that you pop up. You're yeah. integrating banks and you're yes. integrating um, your chart of accounts and your, you know, in many cases, your payroll and a whole yeah. lot of other things that yeah. are the very core of your business. So. Um, getting to that size and accelerating even harder now mm. uh, would have been impossible without automation. Wow, that's that's really interesting to hear. And lastly, can I just ask, how has this changed your team and your team structure? We are, there's one of the big conversations happening at the moment, not just at Zero, but mm. I think across the industry too. There is a very strong push towards data-driven, data-driven, data-driven. Whereas at Zero, we uh, we talk about human-centric, data-driven, yeah. and so we have the teams that I have um, reporting into me are we have an analytics team, and they are they are hardcore um, data wizards. I mean, they are they are exceptional at what they do. Yeah. Um, and then we have the marketing automation technologists, and they've got a real understanding of what you're able to do with the technology and can paint. Um, you know, and, and should be able to be in a position where they can paint any um, artistic rendition of a customer's experience that they want to with the tools and with the data. But probably most importantly, we've still got these teams that are dedicated to understanding the customer life cycle, their life journey with us, um, and understanding what needs to be said, what information needs to be given, what are those key moments in a customer's journey and really speaking to that. And because we have such a beautiful product where it's it's that balance between a beautiful engagement with our product and with our company and with our brand, as well as uh, making sure all the data points line up and, and prove that it's working. Yep. But data is more about proving what we're doing is working, identifying opportunities for further engagement. Um, but you know, really it's still about that human interaction at the end of the day. That's brilliant. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Um, I've been speaking to Andy Schick from Zero, and we've been delighted to have him. Thank you. Right, thank you.